tonight on Super Size vs. Super Skinny. Our youngest and biggest female super sizer checks in to Dr. Christian's feeding clinic. Oh my god. What do you think? Uh, yeah, speechless. Battle commences as she goes head to head with our lightest super skinny. Here it goes. <laughs> I just. 19-year-old Lauren goes stateside for a glimpse of a terrifying future. I don't look in mirrors because I don't like what's looking back at me. Journalist Emma Wolfe meets a woman with cerebral palsy who is a recovering anorexic. Anybody can develop an eating disorder. And Dr Christian is in Las Vegas, where some of the local residents are fighting back against the flab. Nice squat. Obesity levels are on the increase, and here in the UK, we have the highest rate of child obesity in Western Europe. Almost a third of children aged between 2 and 15 in England are now overweight or obese, increasing the risk of type 2 diabetes and heart disease in later life. Plus, up to 6.4% of adults in the UK display signs of an eating disorder, and eating disorders cost the health service between 80 and 100 million pounds every year. With these worrying statistics, Dr. Christian wants to make sure our eating habits start to improve. He's brought together eight super sizers and eight super skinnies whose terrible diets are at opposite ends of the scale. By pairing them up and getting them to swap diets in my feeding clinic, I'm hoping this is going to be just the tonic they need to turn their lives around. Right, Lauren, come forward. So I'm going to pair you with Shelby. You're so small, I can't believe how tiny you are. I know, my arms are like a child's. Both of your arms, one am I? It's really small, I can't believe it. I was quite shocked because she's only young and I was thinking, how did you get so big so quick? So I've got a little girl, that's why I come on out. So fine, yeah. believe it or not. I know, you won't think it, you're tiny. Do you have big meals? All snacking. No, okay. All day. And I don't really drink fizzy. No, no. <laughs> That's all I drink. <laughs> I don't want to squash you. <laughs> Lauren is our heaviest female, and her eating habits are out of control, gorging on fast food and takeaways. And she is really going to struggle with Shelby's minuscule portions and skipped meals. But I'm hoping that their time in the feeding clinic will show them that there is a healthier alternative to both of their diets. 19-year-old Lauren is our youngest supersizer, weighing in at over 28 stone. She's eating her way through 6,000 calories a day, three times the recommended daily allowance. Feel hungry all the time, feel hungry now. <laughs> Feeding on a daily diet of greasy fast food, sugary snacks and litres of fizzy drinks, Comfortita Lauren has put on a staggering 15 stone since giving birth three years ago. Probably a lot more when I'm bored or I'm upset. I even if I feel sick, I still carry on eating. Whilst Lauren struggles to carry her own weight around all day, she relies on the help of her partner Elliot to cook, clean up and run around with her daughter JC. Elliot does a lot more with JC. Hey, you can't be girl, there's yours, look. She has got a stronger bond with him than she has me. Right, should we do it together? Whoa. It does frustrate me, knowing that JC wants me to play with her and I can't. It is upsetting because I can see it in Lauren's face that she really does want to be able to join in and do more things. Lauren not only wants to lose weight for her daughter, she also wants to do it for herself. I would like to get glammed up. I always said that when I lost the weight. First thing I'd buy was a dress, like a black one, a long one, a skin tight one. <laughs> Whilst Lauren has increased the amount of food she eats since having a child, the opposite could be said for pocket-sized mum Shelby, who doesn't make time to eat at all. I'm a 20-year-old with a five-month-old baby, and I'm fitting into age 12 places. It's just wrong. Without padded bras, I don't know where I'd be. <laughs> 
Weighing in at just over six stone, Shelby is our lightest super skinny to enter the feeding clinic. With a daily intake of just over 1,000 calories, Shelby consumes less than the required amount for a child aged one to three years. On a bad day, I have just a slice of toast in the morning and then maybe throughout the day like a chocolate bar and then that would be it, I wouldn't have lunch or dinner. Surviving most days on little more than a few slices of toast, meal skipper Shelby puts her baby's feeding times before her own. If Ava is due her bottle, I just put my lunch to the side and then afterwards I just completely forget about it and won't think to go back to it. And Shelby isn't the only one that's worried about her weight. She was always small but Shelby's lost a scary amount of weight, really, after having a baby, and she don't finish her meal, so it's a bit worrying. She wants to get help, so I'll support her. Shelby wants to learn how to eat again, so she looks more like a woman than a child. My biggest fear for my future is not being able to give Ava a proper bringing up that she needs. I want to enjoy the whole experience of having a baby. I'm so determined to do it for the both of us. With a massive 22 stone between our super size and super skinny, their terrible diets are at extreme ends of the scale. But before they enter the feeding clinic, Dr Christian has planned an early transatlantic trip for Lauren. He hopes this will shock her into seeing just how bad her life could get if she doesn't drastically change her diet. Lauren is headed for the Midwestern state of Missouri to meet an American supersizer who, like her, has put on a vast amount of weight in a short amount of time. My name is Betty Jo Elmore. I'm 24 and I weigh 45 stone. I don't look in mirrors because I don't like what's looking back at me. Betty Jo is 18 stone heavier than Lauren, but there are already distressing similarities. Lauren is reliant on the support of her partner, but for Betty Jo, her dependency on husband Josh has gone beyond having someone to help with the housework. I help her with like when she takes a shower and I help get her lower half and her back and when I gotta wipe her after she goes number two. To have somebody wipe my butt, it really, really bites. <laughs> I feel like I'm just somebody's burden. It's not the kind of life that anybody would want. At just 19 and already 28 stone, Lauren may be headed down a similar road. And despite the fact that Lauren is meant to be changing her ways, as soon as she arrives, it's just chips and cheese. The snacking starts. I like potato chips. Well, I want a couple more. And then I don't stop until so there's no gone. more. <laughs> Yeah. As the girls get better acquainted, Betty Jo opens up to Lauren about what upsets her most about her size. I don't want to have kids so bad. <sighs> I cry sometimes. I wouldn't want to have one right now because I couldn't, you know, get up with them or, you know, put them to bed and stuff. And That's one of my biggest worries too, not being able to do anything for Josie. I can't do a lot for her now, so not being able to do anything for her would just be heartbreaking. Carrying over 45 stone, Betty Jo rarely leaves the house. The only time she does manage to get out is for the monthly food shop with the help of Josh. She's taking Lauren along to show her just how difficult the most simple of trips can be. Would you like to do this more, Mike? Go out. I would love to go out more. You be right back. I'll leave the keys here with you. This is a motorized cart for Betty Jo. It helps her get around the store because she can't walk. Is it coming? Yeah. Sometimes when we come, I have to take her home because they only got one here and someone else has it. Is my butt strong? You all right? Yeah. It's a little embarrassing for me, but it's OK. As well as the physical stress Betty Jo faces when she leaves the house, it's the emotional difficulties that can be harder to bear. My hardest thing about going out is I pay attention to everybody. Like, older people tend to just, like, shake their head in disgust. There's a few times I've 
tried to bite my tongue, but couldn't help but to say something like, what the hell is your problem, or something like that. It's really hard. Yeah, it is, especially when they say something about the person you love. Yeah. As the girls continue to fill their baskets, Dr. Christian is making his way to the supermarket for a surprise visit. Both of these girls are so young, and yet life is passing them by at such a tender age. They're both dependent on their partners for basic activities of daily living. It's really distressing to see, and I hope that for Lauren, this is going to be a complete shock to her. Coming up, Dr. Christian takes the girls to task over their shopping baskets. Have I just busted you? Yeah. What's this? Back home in the feeding clinic, Shelby struggles to keep her first meal down. I just F. And there's a surprise letter for Lauren. I want you to lose weight so you don't get poorly. Big squeeze, love you a million. At 19 and weighing in at over 28 stone, Lauren is our youngest and heaviest female supersizer. On Dr. Christian's orders, she has flown out to Missouri, USA to witness the life-changing consequences of being morbidly obese. This is the dreadful aisle. It's hard to pass this aisle. Yeah, I try and keep her away from these aisles. I'm a cheese person when it comes to chips. Like cheese or barbecue. And as the girls stack up on treats, Dr. Christian is wandering the aisles ready to surprise them. What's going on? <laughs> Have I just busted you? Yeah. What's this? Am I impressed? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> You're supposed to be doing a job for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and shopping is not a very regular occurrence with you, is it? No. Because it's difficult. Yes. Like, I miss, I miss just you miss doing pushing that. a cart. And... That's quite a thing to say. I just miss walking around. Wouldn't like to be in that situation. It kind of changes life quite dramatically. Very much Doesn't so. Doesn't it? You lose your freedom. Yes. You lose your independence. Yes, you do. Back at Betty Jo's home, Dr. Christian is keen for Lauren to understand the serious health problems Betty Jo faces. I have high blood pressure. Mm. Um, I have seizures. I take blood thinners because, like, I've had a blood clot a couple of times. And do you think you're going to be able to turn this around? I want to go for the gastric bypass surgery. I've been to a few doctors, and they want me to lose 20 stone or more by myself. It's very, very difficult to do the surgery 
when you're this size. You don't have to get down to my size or a healthy weight, you just have to get down a bit, but unfortunately that bit for you is a lot. Yeah. Dr. Christian wants to speak to Lauren to really drive home the reality of her supersized diet. It is easy to get to the place where Betty Jo is now. It is easier than you think. Yeah. It's kind of the sobering warning I want to give you. It will just happen. And I know it doesn't happen overnight, but it will just creep up on you because every day that you don't do something about it, every day you have your six, seven, eight thousand calorie junk food day, which is pretty much every day for you, it's all adding a little bit more weight, a little bit more weight, a little bit more weight. Mm -hmm. And the more weight you put on, the less you can exercise and the harder and the harder it gets. <laughs> Pretty scary to think that we could be sisters. Um, we're so alike, like that's Christian said, five years down the line and we would be the same. Before leaving, Betty Jo gives Lauren some words of support. You have to look at it like, you know, you are a big person, but it doesn't mean that you're any less of a person than anybody else. Come on, you have a man, you have a, a daughter. I guarantee you that if you were to lose, you know, some weight, that you guys would be able to do a whole lot, like walk your daughter to school together. Yeah. <laughs> well. But will Lauren's emotional journey to the US really hit home as she returns to the UK? It's opening time at the feeding clinic. Both Lauren and Shelby are checking themselves in for an intense two days where they will swap their terrible diets. At just six stone, Shelby survives on quick bites of bland food and under eats by a thousand calories a day. Welcome to the feeding clinic. Tell me why you're here, Shelby. Because I feel that my health is deteriorating as because I'm too skinny. You eat so little that you are virtually deficient in every single vitamin, mineral, and micronutrient across the scale. Looking through your food diary, I mean... Mm. Boring. Yeah, tell me about it. I think it's It's just... boring and it's all the same colour. It's all kind of white. <laughs> the other thing, actually, yeah. is your fibre content in your diet is nil. So what are your poos like, Shelby? That was a question you weren't expecting. No, but I don't hardly go, literally, like maybe once a week. A once a week maybe, poo? Yeah. <laughs> it's quite bad. Yeah. <laughs> There's no fibre, so you will be pretty constipated. And that will change as you eat, <laughs> even during the diet swap. Yeah. I think the homework for you is time. How are you going to do it? Think about your routine. I know you've got a little one at home. They're always going to come first in your eyes, but you need to be healthy in order to look after healthy. them and you do that's all right. why i wanted to do it now before it got further down the line exactly good and that's exactly the attitude i want you to have it's like right it's now or never let's do it shelby it's lovely to see you best of luck with you. it okay Thank you. all right bye-bye while shelby needs to make time to eat 28 stone lauren has the opposite problem piling on an incredible 15 stone since having her daughter three years ago lauren nice to see you you are 80 times more likely to develop type 2 diabetes. Not okay. eight times, 80 times more likely. You can cut 10 years off your life right now already. Shocking. <laughs> Didn't look at it like that. You change your eating habits, get your weight down to a more healthy weight. Forget I ever said that. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. I think you've used food in the past to sort of satisfy yeah. a, an emotional need. And I think food's been a bit of a comfort to you. Yeah, it has. When I am on my own at home, I do eat more. I want you to, whilst you're in the diet swap, realise that you don't need that emotional support quite so much as you thought you did anymore, or you can find it in other ways. That is going to be the key to your success here. Yeah. I promise you. Okay. All right, my love? Yeah. Good. Well, best of luck with it. Nice Thank to see you. you. OK, bye-bye. It's time for super size and super skinny to start the diet swap. First up, it's breakfast. I don't think I've ever just had one piece toast put in front of me. I don't think I've ever had cola for breakfast before. <laughs> cool. It's a first. Shelby is simply overwhelmed by the size of her breakfast. Three thick sausages, three rashers of bacon, two eggs, three hash browns, two thick slices of toast and a pint of cola. 
So is this just like a normal kind of size that you'd usually have yeah. for breakfast? I think it's crazy, it's massive. I don't know how you can be struggling. <laughs> You're not going to try the bacon? <laughs> I really have a dislike to it, but I will give it a go. So, here it goes. I don't know why. I just... I just... I'm going to eat this now. My last bit. I suppose when it's the only thing that you've got in front of you, you have to enjoy it. <laughs> it's hard. I'm hungry. I'm struggling. <laughs> I think I'm done. Hopefully I'll do a little bit more each time. It's just the beginning. Yeah. Sorry. Lauren looks on longingly as her enormous breakfast hits the bottom of the bin. It was way too big and I'm not used to greasy food and I wouldn't really have that ever. So it was um, quite a shock to the system. I can't wait for lunch to come. <laughs> I'm really hungry now. Struggling on just a slice of toast all morning, Lauren is desperate for something more substantial for lunch. Instead, she gets a glass of water. Why is there anything there? Because um, I skip some meals and lunch is mainly one that I skip. Yeah. No wonder there's nothing to her. There's nothing on the plate, well, literally. Shelby, on the other hand, has to take on two gigantic cheese and onion sandwiches, a big bowl of cheesy crisps, a pint of squash and some flavoured water. Oh, I don't like onions. <laughs> and it's big bits of cheese as well, isn't it? Yeah. The cows must love you. A far from impressed Shelby is struggling to understand Lauren's eating habits. Would you not ever consider trying to just have one sandwich for lunch? I think it's just because I'm so used to it. It's, it's like a habit now. Like, yeah, yeah about that. I need you to won't feel satisfied. That. No, until I've just done it. One, yeah. yeah. I think I'm just about finished. I'm starving right now. I'm feeling really tired, drained. I never imagined it'd be this hard. After a testing start to the diet swap, the girls receive a surprise letter from their families. Oh my God. Hiya, Shelby. We are all so proud of you in taking the beginning steps to becoming a new healthier you. And we will be there for you whenever you need us. We know you can do it, because you are a strong, independent, gorgeous woman and the best mum. We love you no matter what. Is it mine? Yeah. <laughs> means a lot to have your family behind you. Yeah. Lauren receives a letter of encouragement from daughter JC. Dear Mummy, I want you to lose weight so you can take me park and play on swings. I want you to be happy and take me for walks to the shop. Most of all, I want you to lose weight so you don't get poorly. Big squeeze, love you millions, Mummy. <laughs> she wants it for you as much as you want it for yourself. So hard. Mm. Like when I take her to the park and stuff, you know, I just sit there and Elliot and takes one of the swings and slide. So it would be really good for me to, to do, do it. it. That'll be lovely. It will. <laughs> Spurred on with the support from loved ones, it's time to face dinner. For Lauren, it's a cheese toasty. I can't believe you just eat that for dinner. Must have been a bad day. Really bad day. Yeah. <laughs> My little girl eats more than you do. So does mine. <laughs> and Shelby doesn't get off lightly, facing two double cheeseburgers, a large plate of fries covered in ketchup and another sugary dose of cola and squash. That fast food is just full of rubbish. I just think you should lay off having so much. I do feel bad for making you suffer like that, but then in the long run it will do. Do you good, you know, I'll show you that your diet's rubbish and so is mine, obviously. <laughs> Defeated, Shelby struggles to manage even half a burger and a few fries. I think I've had enough food to last me a week today. <laughs> I've had enough to last me half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> no way was I expecting to have that so soon after lunch. 
there's no words. Wow. I'm dreading to see what there is tomorrow. I'm just like wondering what's next. Coming up, the strain of the diet swap takes its toll on super skinny Shelby. I think we should try. Is that mayonnaise? Yeah. <sighs> Dr. Christians in Sin City meeting those battling to lose weight at a fat camp in the Nevada desert. That's it, breathe! He's halfway there. And journalist Emma Wolfe's investigation into living with eating disorders continues. When, you know, when times got really tough, I'd self-induce spasms. The 40 million visitors who come here to Las Vegas every year come for the entertainment, the gambling, the food and the excess. But for the residents of Nevada, there is a very different story. Nearly a quarter of adults in the state said they hadn't done any physical activity in the previous month. With casinos, gaming, hotels and few parks, many residents use this as a reason for not exercising. Step outside the city, though, and space definitely is not scarce. So I've come to a special place just outside of Las Vegas where someone is fighting back. Ready, Anne? Begin! Dr. Christian has come to a residential weight loss camp on the outskirts of Vegas. It aims to get its obese residents, like 24 stone 9 pound Don, from fat to fit. That's it, breathe! He's halfway there. It's a 30-day intensive program teaching nutrition and fitness. On average, men and women lose 6.5 pounds per week. Good job, that's it. Let's hear some breathing. Nice squat. And it's run by personal trainer and former Las Vegas showgirl, Deborah Stefan. So tell me about this program here. Why did you decide to set this up? People in the field of psychology have studied that it takes three weeks minimum to change a, a habit. And so I devised this live-in program. So they come in residence, and in 30 days you can change a person's habits. Deborah's 24-7, month-long program instills a lifestyle change. No machines. The human body is the machine. And Don's hoping this will break his bad habits for good. So, Don, what made you decide to come here to this program? Well, I've been fighting my weight most of my adult life. Yeah. Um, up and down, yo-yo diet. About a quarter of people in Las Vegas, in Nevada actually, admit to not doing any physical activity at all. Can you relate to that? Can you believe that? Yeah. Why yeah. do you think that is? Um, well, I think we're just lazy. <laughs> do you right. think this program is going to be the one for you now? Yeah. Deborah's really teaching me to uh, keep the weight off for a lifetime. Over 60% of Nevada's adult population are overweight, and while exercise is key to reducing weight, a healthy diet is crucial. Marilyn Yamamoto formed Cowboy Trail Farm with the aim of providing locally sourced fruit and veg. So Marilyn, tell me, what is it that you're trying to do here? What are you trying to achieve? 
We're tr our mission is, is to really bring good, healthy food to the community. And this is how we're doing it. We're growing great green vegetables and, and fruit and herbs. So I know it's kind of cold and wintry here, so there's probably not much still growing, but will you show me around? Absolutely, yeah. let's take a look. So Marilyn, the smell in here is wonderful. I can nice smell a sort of peppery, chilli smell. We have our chilli peppers. We have Look a lot of these. greens growing. These are some of the uh, sweet turnip. They've got a real nice sweet flavour. Can I have a bite of this? Absolutely. Raw. Go for it. It's a nice sweet turnip. Gosh, that is delicious. How receptive are people to your message? It's been tough yeah. because they are so inclined to just stay with the processed foods and what have you. So it's, it's a tough road. In a bid to encourage healthier eating habits amongst less affluent families, Marilyn regularly donates fruit and veg baskets. Hello, we have a delivery. Look what we brought for you. Some oh, nice wonderful. fresh veggies. Wonderful. Not bad, Hello. eh? Yeah. Hi, Thank guys. You. Hello. That's a pleasure. What are you going to do with these? Healthy yes. foods. Healthy foods. Yes. Why do you think it's so difficult to eat healthily in Vegas? I mean, it's so much fast stuff to go run and get, so it's got to be a choice that you make, you know, to change and eat better. Well, look what you got yeah. here. I'm going to leave this with you Thank guys. You so so who wants to take this one in? Who wants to take it? Yeah. Services like this are clearly a great idea and they are really going to make a difference. The adults in this family are certainly going to start eating more healthily and start losing weight, but it's the children, it's the kids that are going to be influenced and going to be shown that there are healthier choices that can be made and those choices really do make a difference. Meal skipper Shelby weighs a fraction over six stone and is swapping diets with 28 stone Lauren. It's breakfast on day two in the feeding clinic, and it seems Lauren's luck is in. Today, it's two slices of toast. For Shelby, it's two potato waffles, a whole tin of beans, and three thick slices of buttery toast. You look a bit more happy than yesterday morning. I'm a little bit more at ease because it isn't so in your face. frightening yeah. from yesterday's. And I was relieved that it didn't have so much meat on it and grease. It was a lot healthier compared to yesterday's meals. Where's the butter? Probably a rushed morning, just grabbed it out of the dicer and ate it. Oh my. She obviously go for beige cold food. That's all she has, whole beige. <laughs> I thought you would have eaten it all, especially if I having such a little plate. You would think, because I haven't had anything to eat, I'd be really, really hungry, but I'm all right now about that. I'm done. Within a couple of hours, lunch is served, and for Shelby, it's an enormous carb and fat fueled feast. It's all getting on top of me. I just feel sick of food. I think you should try. Is that mayonnaise? Yeah. Ugh. Shelby faces her biggest meal so far with yet another takeaway a large chicken burger, a plate full of fries covered in mayonnaise, two pork pies, a large helping of crisps, two chocolate cupcakes, one chocolate bar, and all washed down with a pint of sugary squash. Do you really eat all of this in one sitting? Yeah. More fast food. It's just easier to order a takeaway. Food was disgusting. Mayonnaise was hanging out of the burger. Where there was so much grease in the burger, the, the bread went soggy. Fed up, Shelby confronts Lauren over her fast food habit. I think it's really bad the amount of takeaways you do eat. It's just way too much. I think it's just habit of eating this much. Yeah, it is. I felt a bit embarrassed actually putting all that in front of her. I'm finished. Well done. You've done well. Now the penny is finally starting to drop, Dr Christian wants to ensure Lauren understands the potential damage she is doing through her endless supply of white bread. Oh my God! But first, he wants to find out if Lauren is aware how much bread she actually eats. That is actually what you eat in a week. Wow. Two loaves of bread a week, just for you. I, know, I never think I'd eat that much. 40 slices of bread a week. 160 a month, 2,000 slices of bread a year. And you know what? what? That is exactly 
how many are here. I can't believe it. Lauren's 40 slices a week adds up to a shocking 4,000 calories, but that's not the only worry. The white bread is having a dire effect on Lauren's blood sugar levels. What happens with this nice white fluffy bread is that when you eat it, it puts your blood sugar levels right up. In kicks all your insulin and all the mechanisms designed to control blood sugar and whoom, down your blood sugar drops, in fact plummets. When your blood sugar's down, you'll be hungry. You'll be looking to put that blood sugar up again. So what you do after vast quantities of white bread, ironically, you're gonna to want to eat more. Yeah. Consequences of eating more means the weight carries on piling on. Dr. Christian wants to show Lauren the serious consequences of diabetes. Over three million people in England have this condition, and a recent report estimates that by 2025, there will be a staggering five million sufferers in the UK. That is horrible. It's... Ugh. This chap is missing a toe, his big toe has gone, amputated as a result of diabetes. Diabetes affects your circulation and also your nerves. It damages nerves so they don't work anymore, so you can't feel when you have problems. So when you've injured yourself, you can't feel it. So infections set in, you don't know they've set in. Circulation is poor, so things don't heal very well. Even the slightest bit, this is sort of the great raw ulcer going deep down there. Yeah. I don't want you to get this. No. No, I don't. You are in full control of not getting this. Yeah. If you lose the weight, your risk of getting this will plummet in the same way that your blood sugars plummet after lunch. Dr. Christian showed me this horrible picture. Honestly, it knocked me sick. I was really shocked by the diabetes because I've had it in my family before. So it has always been a worry, but it made me think, oh my God, I do need to change. It's the final meal, and time to see what Lauren and Shelby have learnt in the feeding clinic. This is so good. Like, even though it's really small, it's still so nice to have something proper. <laughs> Not just bread. I don't want bread again. <laughs> I haven't seen enough today to last me a lifetime. Whilst Lauren enjoys her first proper meal of chicken, curry and rice, Shelby gets more of Lauren's bread-based food. Half a pepperoni pizza covered in garlic sauce, one large garlic and cheese baguette, two sausage rolls, two pints of squash, and a cup of hot chocolate. I know it's more fast food, but I'm not struggling as much as I was yesterday. Yeah. I've kind of come to terms with food now. Yeah, I got used to it a, a little, little bit more. more. I've definitely learned that it's just a habit, it's something that I do because I'm bored. I've definitely learned that it is not okay to go without food. I won't go skipping meals now and stuff like that because I know how important and stuff it is. And it's not just the skipped meals that Shelby needs to change. Why are you picking it? I'm just um, picking off the um, pepperonis and stuff. I'm very bland and I <laughs> my food. That's something I'm going to take away from here as well, to try flavours and get to enjoy them and stuff. Yeah. Give it a go, you might as well start now. OK. <laughs> how about it? Too bad. See? As their time in the feeding clinic draws to an end, Dr. Christian has their new eating plans. Shelby, that one is yours. For you, my two key words are colour and variety. That's all you have to think about with okay. your diet. Lauren, this one is yours. And I've got two words for you, habit and emotions. Am I really hungry? Do I really need this? Okay. If the answer is no, don't eat. To get to a healthy weight, Shelby needs to increase her calorie intake to 2,200 per day. The toast and skipped meals are out and will be replaced with three meals a day, including plenty of snacks in a healthy assortment of colour and variety. Lauren will cut her calories to 2,500, packing in lots of starchy foods, fruit, vegetables and lean proteins, with an aim to change her eating habits, reducing the boredom eating as well as her weight. I'm going to go out, explore loads of different foods, not just bland foods. Um, I'm going to be a whole new person once I finish this. Definitely. And this is all the help I need now. I found it like, really helpful this week. Bread house shocked me like how much bread I eat. I'm gonna have a good look at the diet plan. 
everything bad goes. Dr. Christian will be checking up on their progress in nine weeks' time. Hi, it was lovely being paired with you. Yeah, and you. And you need to learn fast foods, okay? Yeah, you eat more vegetables. Okay, you promise? Yeah. Oh, well, thank good you. luck. Thank you. See you soon. See you soon. Author and journalist Emma Wolfe suffered from anorexia for 10 years. She's investigating the complex world of eating disorders. Tonight, she wants to find out more about eating disorders and people with disabilities. There are no rules when it comes to eating disorders. I had never even considered what it would be like to have a disability and an eating disorder. Eating disorders in themselves are a huge struggle, but having to deal with the physical ramifications of, of disability as well is quite something. There are over 11 million people living with a disability in the UK, yet there have been no official studies into how eating disorders affect people with disabilities, and no figures are available on the proportion of disabled people suffering. Emma has been contacted by 28-year-old Sarah, who is a recovering anorexic. I was born with cerebral palsy, so I've never known life any differently. Anybody can develop an eating disorder. For Sarah, the combination of the death of a close family member, as well as the desire for control, caused an innocent diet to develop into obsessive calorie counting and anorexia taking over. I began dieting on various normal diets. I set myself targets and I'd want to go below the target. Nobody could force me to eat and nobody could make me eat something that I would refuse. I sought comfort in being able to control how much I ate. I felt a compulsion to continue. Alone and isolated, Sarah lived with the secret of her anorexia for 18 months before it was recognised. In the depths of my eating disorder, I felt scared. I felt scared of recovery. But my mum suggested to me that I needed to get some help about my eating. And I eventually opened up to my GP. Sarah received treatment for her anorexia. However, the specialist facilities that she required, such as wheelchair access, appropriate weighing scales, specialist health and nutritional information, simply did not exist. I had to be weighed at a wheelchair clinic. I was weighed by people who didn't necessarily have a full understanding of my eating disorder, didn't necessarily know why I was there. Emma meets Sarah to find out how it might be even tougher dealing with an eating disorder when you're disabled. Do you think there's a lack of understanding around people that have a physical disability and an eating disorder? In a way, people with disabilities completely fit the criteria for being vulnerable to problems around food because for a lot of them, it's the one and only thing they can control in their lives. Sarah's cerebral palsy causes her muscles to go into spasm. At the height of her eating disorder, she used this part of her disability as a method of losing weight. When, you know, when times got really tough, I'd self-induce spasms. Tell me about spasms. If you either, like, inflict pain on yourself or concentrate a lot of your energy, it is actually possible to make your body go into, into full rigid spasm or, or very jerky movement. It's going to make you burn a hell of a lot and you sweat as though you've been for a run. Did you find there was actual support for specifically for people with disabilities? Um, I haven't found any. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist, I suppose, but... It would be really good if it was an area that people were more aware of. It took almost two years until Sarah received specialist outpatient treatment, regularly meeting a therapist and dietitian. She is now on the road to recovery. What would you say to someone else in your position? I'd say that they're not alone and I've actually shared some of my experiences in an online blog, I feel that it's a very unexplored but prevalent topic. The sooner you realise you're not alone, the sooner you're able to, to recognise 
that your symptoms are real and that they do need attention. Visit these websites to find out where to get support and advice about coping with eating disorders and physical disability. Coming up, we find out if Lauren and Shelby's newfound determination has brought results. Well, Shelby, I can tell you that you have put on. It's been two months since fast food lover Lauren and meal skipper Shelby left the feeding clinic. It's time to find out if they've kept their resolve and stuck to those healthy eating plans. Today is really important to me because it's the start of a new chapter in my life. If I don't get the results I want then obviously I'm just going to have to try harder and keep going until I get the results that I want. Can't wait to know the results. I've worked so hard for it. My family have been there all the way. so. It'd be really nice to go back and tell them that I've lost the weight. Shelby, it's good to see you again. Tell me how the last few weeks have been. I feel like I'm constantly hungry now. I love to eat. Say if I'm eating lunch, I'll think about what I'm going to have for dinner. Wow, this is so different. I know. So tell me a little bit more about the sorts of foods that you're eating now. More colour, more variety, more quantity? A lot more. I never really ate vegetables you before. Did you and, know? No. and now I do. That's very good to hear, because one of the things I had to nag you about in clinic was your total lack of fibre in your diet, wasn't I know. it? Now I'm getting the amount that I need, and you can definitely tell the difference. You're going to get so much more out of being a mum and out of your daughter Everything. now than you ever were before, aren't you? So that's great exactly. news. Good. Lauren, it's good to see you again. You're looking very well. How have things been? I'm sticking to my plan. You have? Yeah. No cheating? Nope. Tell me more. What's new then? I've not had any of the cola, not had any of the fast food, no chocolate. Cut it all out. Completely? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What about your portion sizes? Have you managed to get them a bit more under control? Yeah, instead of having the big massive plates, just add a little plate now. Now your partner did the majority of the housework and looking after the little one. Yeah. Has that changed now? It's changed massively. Like, I can really? bath an hour, I can put her to bed, not get out of breath. I took her to school the other day as well and picked her up. It was great. Right. She loved Very it. different. I've got loads of confidence now. Um, I've had loads of support of everyone. I'm quite proud of myself. You've made this all sound rather easy. Has <laughs> it's it been not that been easy, easy? No. 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 I just needed a push in the right direction, and that's what I got, so... And this works. is amazing. <laughs> it's time for Lauren and Shelby to be reunited. Hello. Oh, my God. I haven't seen you in ages. How are you? Oh, my God, you look great. Oh, do you? Look you look so good. <laughs> How's it going? Brilliant. 
Crowd the cola, the fast food, all of that, like, that you really? had. That's so good. Yeah. You look so much slimmer. You can see it in your face as well. You look much happier with yourself. So have you been going on? Yeah, it's been really good. I'm used to food now. I eat more, I eat regularly, and I can finish my meals now. <laughs> well, that's good. And have all my meals and snacks a day. Bit of a difference. Well, don't you two look good? Both of you were finding that your bad eating habits were really affecting your relationship with your kids, your whole family yeah. in general. But life now is better, right? Yeah, That's all I care about. You look really well. Your health has certainly improved. I think you've both done fantastically well. Okay. Shelby, we're going to do you first, all right? What do you think? A few pounds you'd like, wouldn't you? I know. Yeah, maybe a few pounds. Well, Shelby, I can tell you that you have put on half a stone. Seven. Half a stone in weight, <laughs> seven pounds oh in my weight. God. Are you pleased? Oh, yeah, definitely. So pleased. So I, d I didn't expect it to be that much, quite that much. But no, you didn't. <laughs> Half stone's fantastic. Okay. Not only that, you've put on four inches somewhere. Has anywhere felt on bigger chest. to you? <laughs> yeah. Have you noticed? Not bad, eh? Not bad at all. I I'm going like to keep that. going. <laughs> Lauren, you put a lot into this, haven't you? Yeah. So you want to do one, and you have done one. You have lost stone in weight. Oh my God. Are you pleased? Yeah. Well done. That is a lot, and you can tell you've worked hard for that, and there's no stopping you now. It's exactly, really, about the amount that I'd like you to use. The right speed, the right time. It's not a diet. This is, I hope, changing your eating habits that becomes a lifestyle for the rest of your lives. Would you agree with that? Definitely yeah? agree, yeah. yeah. Good. I'm really proud of you both. When Dr. Christian said I put on four inches around my chest, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Wouldn't mind another four. <laughs> I'm really proud of myself for doing it. My future looks good now. Losing that amount, well, I know I can do it. So there's no stopping me. I'm definitely going to stick to this. Definitely. But you just have to push yourself that little bit harder and believe that you can and you will. Next time it's a super size versus super skinny standoff at the feeding clinic. I think you could maybe just try a bit harder. No. In Las Vegas, Dr. Christian sees how a giant tube is helping to cure obesity wounds. How are you feeling in here? I think I could probably handle this. Yeah, 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 definitely. And we meet a US supersizer facing an extraordinary dilemma. I have to find a hospital that can suit my size. In fact, they've actually talked about having to go to the local zoo. 